The two combatants in this war are burning through artillery shells and other weapons and ammunition at a rate not seen since the Korean War, officials said, and will need to restock during the long winter to come. It is estimated that Russia is firing a staggering 20,000 artillery rounds per day, a senior U.S. defense official estimated, while Ukraine is firing approximately 4,000 to 7,000 rounds daily. The Ukrainians are quickly burning through their stockpiles of artillery rounds and other ammunition, officials said. Ukraine still needs a significant amount of artillery going forward, the official said. Consumption rates in this war are very high. The recent counteroffensive has yielded significant artillery stock for the Ukrainians as Russia continues to supply them, their own losses effectively helping to maintain the assault. In contrast the Russians have had to turn to North Korea to assist with resupply. Before the introduction of various Western units into the Ukrainian armed forces, they were solely reliant on the very same systems used by the Russians. This fact has made it critical for the Russians to destroy those ammunition dumps that were under threat of capture, their failure to do so has been a major mistake, and does bear consideration as to how many Russian servicemen have lost their lives from their own captured stores. The Russians have used a wide variety of different artillery systems during the invasion, from towed, to self-propelled and various rocket types. But it hasn't been easy going and the losses have been substantial with a surprisingly large number of captured systems. In terms of the various towed pieces, they have lost an estimated 144 units of which 77 were captured. The self-propelled units have also been badly mauled with 273 units having been lost with an incredible 101 captured. The rocket launcher systems have also had it bad with 151 units lost and 50 captured. For the purposes of this video, I am going to focus on our top 5 Russian self-propelled artillery units that are old, but which still pack one hell of a punch. First let's start off at number 5 with the Tyalpin, which first entered service back in 1972, and is brilliant example of Soviet technology and reliance on big beefy artillery to shock their enemies. As it is now 50 years old, it gives you a real idea of the age of the machinery being employed by the Russians in Ukraine. The 2S for Tyalpin is a 240mm self-propelled mortar system, based off the M240 towed mortar that saw action in World War II. The 2S4 has a capacity of 20 rounds. These are placed in two automated drum-type magazines. The rounds are fed to the top of the carrier, where they are placed on a track. The mortar then tilts to the horizontal position. The breech opens and a ramming device pushes the round into the breech. The breech closes and the mortar tilts into the firing position. In combat, the mortar is elevated between 50 degrees and 80 degrees, and it can fire one round per minute. At the start of the invasion of Ukraine, Russia had nine units in an active role and up to 400 in storage. These units would no doubt have been activated as and when the need demanded it. Thus far three units have been confirmed destroyed by site Oryx's Pioncop.com. When those 240mm mortars cook off, it's pretty spectacular. Please can you take the time to drop a like a subscribe, or even better leave a comment and share. We need and sincerely appreciate your support. Next on our little list at number 4 is the 2S19 MSTA, a 152.4mm self-propelled howitzer designed by the Soviet Union, which entered service in 1989 as the successor to the 2S3 Akatsia. The vehicle has the running gear of the T-80, but is powered by the T-72's diesel engine. The Russians are running two models of the 2S-19 in Ukraine, the 2S-19 M1 which unveiled in 2000, with first deliveries in 2007 and the 2S-33, which has a battery of improvements including a new automatic fire control system, digital electronic maps and increased range. So far, the Russians have lost 90 units of the 2S-19 M1 and 18 of the newer model. Apart from the units they have been able to capture which has amounted to an incredible 45 units, the Ukrainians started the war with 40 units of the 2S-19 M1. Coming in at number 3 is the 2S-5 Giant Sint S, a 152mm self-propelled gun which is capable of engaging targets at longer ranges, and at a higher rate of fire than the more widely produced 2S3 Akatsia 152mm self-propelled gun, 
which didn't make it onto this list, and it is capable of firing nuclear projectiles. The 2S5 Giantsint S was first produced in 1976 along with the towed version, the 2A36 Giantsint B. It uses a chassis modified from the SA4 Krug surface-to-air missile system with decent all-terrain mobility, and can carry 3152mm rounds with a range of 28km, or 33-40km to 40 km for rocket-assisted projectiles. In addition to high explosives, the gun can also fire heat, cluster, smoke and nuclear projectiles. Deploying to fire the gun takes 3 minutes, and it can sustain a rate of fire of 5 to 6 rounds per minute. Most of the crew, except the gunner, deploy outside of the vehicle while firing. This of course makes them more vulnerable to counter-battery fire. It is usually accompanied by an ammunition carrier with an additional 30 rounds of ammunition. The 2S5 was introduced into service in 1978, replacing the 130mm M46 field gun battalions in Soviet artillery brigades at the Army AN front level. Production ceased in 1991. At the start of this war, the Russians had 399 active units and approximately 500 in stock. The Ukrainians had 25 and later managed to capture six Russian pieces which were promptly pressed into service. Number 2 on our list is the 2S1 Vostika, a Soviet self-propelled howitzer based on the MTLBU multipurpose chassis, mounting a 122mm 2A18 howitzer. In the Russian army it is commonly known as Gvozdika. What makes this unit unique is that it is fully amphibious with very little preparation, and once afloat is propelled by its tracks. A variety of track widths are available to allow the 2S1 to operate in snow or swamp conditions. It is NBC protected and has infrared night vision capability. The 2S1 entered service in the 70s and has been used by a substantial number of armies, with Ukraine boasting approximately 640 units in service or storage with the Russians having 620. The 2S1 has seven road wheels on each side. The running gear can be fitted with different widths of track to match terrain. The interior is separated into a driver's compartment on the left, an engine compartment on the right and a fighting compartment to the rear. Within the fighting compartment the commander sits on the left, the loader on the right and the gunner to the front. The all-welded turret is located above the fighting compartment. The 2S1 uses a 122mm howitzer based on the towed D30 howitzer. The gun is equipped with a power rammer, a double baffle muzzle brake and a fume extractor. It can fire a variety of different rounds. During the invasion, the Russians have lost approximately 34 units. Estimated 500 units built, the Ukrainians started the war off with 99 units and the Russians with 60 on active service, and roughly 270 in storage. The vehicle is self-entrenching and has an overpressure CBRN defense system. It was reported that the 12M long gun weighs 14.6 tons and has a service life of 450 rounds. The 2S7 uses a track chassis that was designed specifically for this artillery system. It uses a number of components from the T-72 and T-80 main battle tanks. It is powered by a turbocharged liquid-cooled V-12 diesel engine. Developing 750 horsepower it is also fitted with an auxiliary power unit, developing 24 horsepower and powering all systems when the main engine is shut down. The 2S7 carries a massive crew of 14, 7 are carried by the Pion and 7 in an auxiliary vehicle. During the war the Russians have 6 of these behemoths with only one being captured. We sincerely hope that you have enjoyed our top 5 Russian self-propelled artillery units and we look forward to your comment and any suggestions you may have.